Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogrod333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Kaiserek as Mongolia. Now, in the last video, we finally finished our war against the Ma clique, and have essentially, I think we're in a decent position right now. Now, I don't, I haven't played the, uh, too far into this update before, at least without fucking around with console commands and all that. So, I don't really know... What's going to be happening next? Alright, let's have a pause. The pause from this nation still struggle to survive. A focus attempt must be made to help them. That sounds good to me. I like helping poor people. I am pro-poor person, you know? I have nothing against poor people. Some of my best friends are poor people. My lawyer is a poor per person. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's cut the memeing out a little bit. Um, Xinqiang, clique. Yeah, they have way more troops than us, so we're not going to do anything against them, even though, um, yeah. And same with Fengtian, Shangji, Shangqing, even though we can't do anything about this. Um, the Yunnan clique. Liangguang, too. Can't do anything against them. Uh, yeah, we can't really do much. We definitely can't fight against Russia. Yeah, we can't do that. We cannot do that. Honestly, we're kind of between a rock and a hard place right now. So I don't really know what to do. Other than... Well, we can finish up a little bit of, um... We can do a little construction work. Work on connecting the country, at least. Now, granted, our infrastructure is kind of shit anyway. But, um, might as well get working on something. And we'll just kind of... We'll sit back and we'll, we'll chill out. And just kind of see what happens in the world. Um, I think we did... I didn't come up, up with too many lofty goals in this video. I just really wanted to try out uh, the new ch region in China. Maybe get the uh, our claims in the Ma clique done. And, you know, just uh, have fun with the new update. And I'm, I had fun with this series. And judging by some of the feedback I've been getting, because I've been able to um, upload some of these parts slowly a lot of you guys are enjoying it too which really makes me happy um yeah same with my mass effect series actually because i've been getting some insane views this year like when my videos has 210 views in the first week i can't think of that ever happening before at least on at least recently maybe for my uh Führerreich? Like, right after it came out when I did the Georgia campaign. I think that did pretty well. Um, ooh, Ukraine is looking pretty thick. God damn. Uh, Austria's intervening in Veltkrieg. Well, that's, um... Well, um... The socialists are looking pretty thick right now. I'm not going to lie. At least in the Italian peninsula. So, I don't you know if that's the best idea. Um, the Reichsback is holding their own, actually. Um, looks like the Kingdom has kind of gone down the isolation path. So they're not really in the faction anymore. Though, um... Yeah. So, I don't know how this is going to go. They have Sweden and Finland, so that's going to help in the north. And then from there, they won't have this side. They still have Iceland and... Denmark too, because you know that's gonna help a lot having Iceland in. Not to shit on Iceland, it's actually a very, very pretty fun, interesting country to play as. I'd actually play on that. Well, I might play as them in the future, probably not for the next series, because you know they have pretty much no manpower, and uh, you know because of that they can't really help the poorest. They can't really do too much, but it's still an interesting. Kind of focus tree. 
Our nation will never develop without proper schooling and education. This is necessary if we are to advance as a society and resist falling back into, tra into tra tra traditionalist ways. So let's get to the Mongolian Education Act. Sounds good to me. Really does. Um, I need some more water. I have a ton of ice in here, but no water. Oh, fun thing about um, China, because I think I mentioned this, but I went to China uh, this last November back in 2019, before the coronavirus and all that stuff happened. And um, we went with this uh, Groupon deal, which basically we went to go to um, Beijing, Shanghai, Suzhou, and Hangzhou for about 10 days for like the deal was like 500 bucks including flights and hotels and it's not like shitty hotels they're actually like at least three star hotels so they're not decent hotels some meals paid for tour group we have to pay extra for some other tours so it's not like a totally awesome deal but we still got to go to some pr cool places like we went to um Beijing over here, we got to, I got to see the Forbidden Palace right here in person. Very cool, interesting place. Kind of eerie, because right outside it is uh, Tiananmen Square. And Tiananmen Square, you know, that's where the student massacre happened. And our tour guide, because, you know, he has experience for the West, he told us, that, you know, he knows what happened back in 89, but a lot of people in China don't know what happened. Because, you know, they don't teach it over there. Because, you know, they have a very hard uh, communist grip over the uh, the education system. Because they don't want anyone finding out the fucked up shit they've done. Which makes sense from a brutal dictatorship point of view, you know? Well, that's uh, I'm getting a little bit off topic. Um, So, <coughs> let's get working on another... Uh, yeah, fuck it. Let's get no working on another one of these. So, there are a bunch of, you know, walking around. There are a bunch of security cameras everywhere. Right outside it, like, there's Tiananmen Square uh, on one side. And the other side, it's, what is it? The Hall of Heroes or something like that. Which is basically the Chinese equivalent of Congress. Like, the Politburo meets there. They That's where they decide, you know, all the shit that's going to be happening in China. At least the major stuff. That's where Xi Jinping was inaugurated again as chairman. And I kind of came to a weird realization, because also in Tiananmen Square is the mausoleum of Mao, Mr. Z Mao Zedong. And there's, like, massive fucking... Like, they said that if we wanted to go see the body of Mao, it would take, like, an hour just to get inside. Because there's such a big fucking line. And, you know, we kind of view him in the West as kind of a kind of a brutal authoritarian dictatorship dictator but a oh, I, I need to select some research let's do uh, encryption but since a they don't have the full picture and B Mao was kind of like the big liberator of uh, they kind of view him as be liberated from the J Japanese since you know they're not a big fan of mr. Kai Shek and so they, he's a hero to them really no matter what even despite the, um, you know, Great Leap Forward, which killed a bunch of people, but that's besides the point. So, it's like a massive fucking line there in Tiananmen Square. And so anyway, I kind of realized, which was kind of a trippy fucking thought, that me, a dumb Westerner American who knows everything about history that he knows from basic high school, basic American high school education and YouTube videos. I know more about what happened in Tiananmen Square in 1989 than the people who live in China, most people, of course, some of the younger people, you know, they have VPNs, so you kind of know the full story, that pe the people who have, ooh, okay, Japan, the people who have VPN, uh, the people who go through their whole life in the Chinese education system who go to this place to see the sights, I know more about what happened in this place in reality, like the, the fucked up nitty gritty history, than the Chinese natives who live there. That kind of tripped me up.
yeah, that, that, that weirded me out. That's kind of a creepy thought, you know? And, um... No, I like going to China. There's a lot of cool stuff. Um, Beijing, very cool... Uh, very cool place, a lot of cultural history. You gotta go to Forbidden Palace, the Summer Palace, or the reconstructed version of Summer Palace since you know the Brits and the French burned that down. Um, what else? The te what was it, Temple of Heaven? A lot of cool stuff in Beijing, and then you know, I went to Shanghai, which is a really cool city. It's a weird like it's like a kind of a capitalist Disneyland. There goes Reclamation War. Um, which is ironic because, you know, China's communist. Well, is it, if it really is or not, I don't know. I'll get into that in later. And then I went to uh, Hangzhou, which is beautiful. Um, this is Western Lake over there. It's very serene, tranquil. It's honestly beautiful, and I'd, I'd like to go there again. Just to Hangzhou. Like, I'd like to go to China again. After this whole coronavirus shit gets figured out. But, um, Hangzhou was beautiful, and then, um, I also went to Suzhou, which, unless I'm fucking blind, I don't see it on the map, but it's somewhere in this kind of area, and it was really cool. So, um, even with the whole, you know, author not don't go now to China, because of the whole, you know, coronavirus thing, but, I'd recommend... <sighs> Because it, it's hard to recommend going to China because of all the fucked up shit they're go doing with the, uh, the Uyghurs right now. Which, for those of you who don't know, they're essentially doing a cultural genocide over here against the uh, Uyghur Muslims who live here. They've been suppressing the Tibetan people as well, which is, it's kind of awkward now that they've been occupied by Feng Tiang. But they're doing a lot of messed up shit. They're an authoritarian state. They're not very friendly to democracy or dissent or any of that. But... Just the cultural history and all that. It's so it's interesting. I think that if they ever did get their shit figured out, it would be worth going to. And I think honestly, like I don't regret going. Like there's part of me who you know I don't like authoritarianism in really any form, left wing, right, right wing, any of that. Like, it's fun to meme around in games sometimes, and I, I do that, too. But, you know, and I guess it does depend on the flavor of authoritarian, because some regimes are more evil than others, you know? But, um, yeah. Um, Japan, China right now, communist China, it, they're kind of up there, but at the same time, you do kind of got to understand that, you know, the government doesn't really reflect the will of the people, though granted, since they have such a tight control over the media, they kind of force the, the narrative, but still. Um, I don't know. Like, the people there, like, people here where I live in California, or where other places I've traveled, some of them are cool and really nice, and they're really friendly. Like, the tour guys we had were great. They were funny. Um, actually, I had people walk up to me and want to take pictures with me and my friend who I went with because we're white. I'm not even joking. They don't see white people very often. So when they see it, they're like, oh my god, a white person. We got to take pictures of him. I'm not even joking. Um, we had a few black people, uh, um, African Americans, I should say, in our group too. And they were, the Chinese people were infatuated with them because, you know, they see white skin. You know, in movies and all that. Here and there. It's more common than, say, you know, black people. Because, you know, if you... Not too many white... They see some white foreigners here and there in China... In, you know, visiting China or working there and all that. So they're kind of used to that. But they don't... You know, they're not used to... I, I'm trying not to sound weird right now. Because it's kind of weird explaining it. But they're not used to... They're not used to seeing white people. They definitely aren't used to seeing black people. And so, like, there was um uh, this one black girl who had a uh, her hair braided up, and like they, I, I shit you not, they actually started like grabbing her hair and feeling it. It it, it was it was weird, but they weren't doing it to be weird or mean. They were doing it out of like a weird, genuine curiosity. So it's kind of hard to get mad at them or maybe a bit weirded out, but not mad at them. 
because it's really interesting. And, you know, there are some people, it was mainly the older generation who just kind of seemed, no one was outright hostile to us, but, you know, they were kind of indifferent, you know? Because they're like, eh, Westerners, who gives a fuck? Um, so, yeah, and then, um, so, you know, it's like anywhere else in the world. They're nice people, they're bad people. What are you going to do? You know? Um, I do got to... I was going to bring up one thing, though. Um, Shanghai. Shanghai was probably a, one of the coolest places I've ever been to in my life. Like, I've been to been to San Francisco a couple times. I've driven through L.A. to go to, to, go to like, Disneyland and stuff, but I haven't really been too much there. I went there to go to the airport, too, but that's... No, LAX fucking sucks for those of you who have never been. Bad airport. San Fran isn't much better. I think SAC, um, Sacramento Airport, is probably one of the better ones I've been to. It's also a closer drive to me. Ooh, we can uh, deploy some units. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, what was I talking about? But yeah, Shanghai is cool, but it's, it's weird because it looks like this like bright capitalist like playground. Essentially, because you have these cool skyscrapers all across the boon. You have financial centers all over. It's probably the most multicultural city in in China because they have a bunch of expats all over the place. So they're, the English there is generally better. The legation cities have joined the Entente. Interesting. Um, what was I saying? And um, like they they literally have Disneyland there. It's they have Disneyland. I think they have... They might have a Legoland over there, too. I don't know. I didn't go to either. I mean, our friend were kind of tempted to go to Disneyland, but at the same time, we can go to Disneyland over here if we wanted to. Granted, it's, it's totally different, but still. But it's kind of weird, like, seeing, like, a capitalist utopia, like, kind of a... Pl kind of like, like, what do you think of, like, a big capitalist city? And what do you think... And what is, at least on paper, a communist city? Uh, like, like a communist country. And then they kind of came to the realization, like, I kind of knew this, sort of, but the current China isn't really communist. I know I'm going on a bunch of weird tangents, but this is the last part. There's not really too much more we can do, so I figured, let's, 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 let's dig into this a little bit. China isn't really communist anymore when you look at it. Because they abandoned, after Mao died, they abandoned, like, the big kind of redistribution-y principles, they, um, they still kind of, they claim it. Like, on paper, like, they say that they're a communist society. But when you look into it, um, let's get working on more infrastructure. They aren't really communist because they have businesses that are privately owned and all that. Um, granted, a lot of, there's a lot of state-run stuff. Like, we went to a couple of tea plantations, jade stuff, uh, jade factories, school, like, cool stuff, but it was all ran by the government, so this comes with some caveats. It's not really, I won't really say it's communism, more it's more like, um, state capitalism. That's what I describe it as. Let's get, get a liberal nation going. It's a state, it's, the state controls capitalism in the country, and that, you know, when you, you kind of hear you don't hear too much anymore ever since Corona, but you hear, you know, about the Belt and Road Initiative, how they're building, like, ports in Africa, even in, like, Greece, um, Iran, Sri Lanka, all to, A, kind of gain influence in Africa, and B, to isolate both India and America, and get more influence in the world, uh, get more influence going for them. And that's all, you know, all... I'll, I'll go on for a bit more on this point before I end the video. It's all, you know, the government runs all this shit, you know? And so, a lot of people, you know, they think, you know, oh, but, uh, Russia's our, I don't want to say biggest sweat, like, they're gonna, because I don't think, at this, y you'd like to hope. We're beyond, you know, world war, the idea, possibility of a world war and all that. People, a lot, a lot of people say that, you know, oh, oh, Russia's the big threat. They're um, interfering with our elections. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And, I mean, I'm not saying Ru Russia or Putin are, are good guys or anything. Also, they're at war for Reichspach, so R.I.P. 
them, am I right? I'm not saying Russia or Putin are good guys or anything, but I think the bigger threat, if we have to assign threats, is probably China. Because they, like Russia at least keeps up a sort of facade about democracy. And they're not, they kind of are in a way. It's very, it's, it's controlled heavily, don't get me wrong. But there's also, I don't know, like, you know, there's very democratic institutions in place. There are a bunch of oligarchs who run things behind the scenes, but they at least keep up a sort of facade around democracy. China doesn't even do that. They're openly hostile to democ. Ooh, legation cities collapse. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. But yeah, um, what was I saying? Um, because, you know, there are, like, Chinese figures in the government right now who are openly hostile to democracy and all of that, which us and, you know, Western nations hold dear. Not to say that, you know, everything's perfect in, like, Europe or America. I know for a fact we're, we're dealing with our own problems, but I don't know. I, like, this is kind of random, I do recognize, but if I, if I did have to say anything, I would say this. Be grateful for what we have. It's not perfect by any means. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of issues with, you know, America right now and the path it's going down, but we still have the institutions of democracy. It might seem kind of bleak right now. And same goes if you're in a European country. Things might seem bleak now, but if there's one thing I kind of realized when I realized one thing that, and along with realizing that I kind of knew more about what happened in Beijing in Tiananmen Square all those years ago that fucking s students didn't know about or anyone in China really knows about who, is, who wasn't there to see it themselves is that things could be worse. Things could be so much worse. And uh, on that note, I think it's time to end it here. Um, I hope it didn't come, come across as too preachy or boring or anything. But, um, yeah, I, I figured, because we, we don't really have too much anything else to do in this last uh, episode of, my, of our campaign. So I figured we might as well, you know, just chill, do something different, do a little more talky stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, and along with the series as a whole. If you enjoyed this series, well, at least this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you have any comments or feedback about the channel or anything, if you have any questions or comments on what I said, go ahead and leave a comment section below. I read all the comments I get, and I appreciate any and all feedback you guys might have for me. Um, or we could start a discussion, too. That'd be, I'm, I'm down for anything, really different perspectives, critiques, any of that. I'm down uh, to have that discussion, if you guys are. Um, if you want to see more of these videos in the future, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do for the next Hoi 4 series, though I know that I'm go probably going to be recording it right after. Probably not right after this, because I'm getting kind of tired. I have I have a test I got to study for. Maybe right after, I don't know. It's going to be soon after this. I'm not going to take a fucking, hopefully not, take a massive gap in between recordings. I'm probably going to upload a series right after this. So, if you're interested in watching any more of the stuff, I'm letting you do Hearts of Iron. I'm doing a Mass Effect Free LP right now. I'm going to be doing some other campaigns uh, for other games. EU4, when the new DLC comes out. Probably, I don't know, Stardew Valley, City Skylines. I'm not entirely sure yet, but... I'll do something sometime soon. Uh, some different stuff, stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for my uploads every weekday, as well as ideally every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, really anything of that sort, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any all feedback you kind of... I already said... I basically said the comments thing already. Um, if you want to support financially, I have a Patreon thing down link below. Uh, Patreon down link below. Send a few bucks my way if you are so inclined. If not, 
fair enough. I understand. Times are tough, but I'd appreciate it if you could. Also, have a Discord down link below if you want to check that. We can chat, play games, and just have a fun old time generally. That's really about it, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I had a lot of fun with the series. I hope you did too. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.